Hi guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to assemble my Christmas Village bakery building. This bakery is part of a trio of shop buildings I designed as a set. In the set is a cafe as well as a candy shop. Here is a look at the back of the bakery. And all my Christmas Village buildings have this big back opening so that you can put a flameless tea light inside. I call these buildings Christmas Villages, but they actually make quite beautiful Thanksgiving centerpieces as well. And all three designs are available to purchase separately or as a set. This is the second Christmas Village set I've designed. My other set is this one with a church and two townhouses, also available as a set. And if you're interested in the paper trees in these images, they are also available to purchase separately in my shop. And I'll include links for these designs in the description below. Okay, moving on to our bakery. I've designed it so that you can use two colors for your bakery, one being the color of the building, which you see in white here, and the second one is the window and door trim and the roof, and as, as well as those stripes on the awning. And now let me go over what you'll see in your downloaded folder, and hopefully this will help you navigate through what you'll need to cut the parts for your bakery. So when you open up your main folder, you'll see two more folders labeled like this. You'll also see a PDF file called labeled parts. And if you open that up, you'll see this. Now this file is just a reference file and this is to tell you what all the parts are for. The parts in your cut file are not labeled. So hopefully this will help you with determining what color to cut each piece in. And now going back to these two folders, I've created two different file types, mainly for Cricut users. If you have a scoring tool for your machine, then you'll use the file in this folder labeled Yes Scoring Tool. And the parts in the SVG file of that folder will look like this. And for those of you who are experienced Cricut users, you'll know this already, but I have to repeat this in all my videos for our new Cricut users. The dash lines you see here are the fold lines. And in order to get your scoring tool to score those lines, you need to select them and then change them from cut lines to score lines in the operation menu. And this will get your scoring tool to create fold lines like this. I do have a full video that goes into more detail about fold lines that I'll link below and if you're new to the Cricut machine I encourage you to watch it because it'll walk you through how to prepare your file if you're using a scoring tool. And if you do not have a scoring tool you will use the SVG file in this folder labeled no scoring tool. These are the same parts as in the Yes Scoring Tool file. I've just changed the colors. And the key difference here is the dash fold lines will be cut as dash lines like this. And unlike for a scoring tool, you do not have to do anything to the fold lines when you import this into Design Space. Your blade will just cut these as dash lines. And if you're not using a Cricut machine and you have a scoring tool for your machine, I would recommend using the Yes Scoring Tool file. I'm not familiar with other machines, so I can't give you any direction for it, but just be aware that the dashes in this No Scoring Tool file are individually drawn lines. So a scoring tool would treat each dash as a line, which wouldn't be very efficient. And that's all the things I wanted to show you for your downloaded folder. Now we can move on to assembling our bakery. Here are all the cutouts for my bakery. I recommend using a mix of glue as well as double-sided tape for this. You can use just glue for the whole project, but there are some parts where I prefer to use double-sided tape for a specific reason, which I'll show you. Here is what the final bakery will look like. I'll be making this beige version because it's easier to see the dashed cut lines that are the fold lines. I'm going to be adding the window frames just to the front panel and the side panels and we're going to leave the back panels unfinished like this. But obviously you're welcome to put the frames on your back panel as well. I'm calling this piece here at the front the vestibule and then these are the awnings. So let's get started with assembly. Starting with our four building panels, the first step is to make all our folds. And here I'm starting with my front panel and all the folds are going to go in the same direction for every panel. And you might find it easier to just flip it over and make your folds. Okay. 
and then do the same with your back panel. And the side panels. And lastly, the vestibule piece here. Now one thing I need to mention is these two fold lines, there's two horizontal fold lines here, those are not to be folded. Those are guidelines to add this decorative piece here later on. So just make sure you do not fold those two horizontal fold lines. And again, make sure you do not fold these two lines here. And that's it for folding. Next, we're going to glue on all our window frames. For glue, I'm going to be using this tacky glue because it dries faster than regular white glue. And you can dispense the glue directly from the bottle, but I'm going to put my glue into a small bowl and then use a small paintbrush. So starting with one of these smaller windows, you just need to cover the back side with glue and you don't have to cover the whole surface here I'm just trying to get the corners spread out my glue evenly and then just place it down matching it with the cutouts on the panel of the building and all your windows should match with all their cutouts and now do the same thing with all the frames And next, the side panels. And then the vestibule piece. Now when you go to attach the frame for this door, the important thing here is to make sure the bottom edge of your door does not pass that fold line on the vestibule piece because this is going to be sitting on your table and you don't want the door sticking out at all. And for these two accent strips, we're not going to place them right now. I'll show you how to attach them once we assemble this vestibule, which we'll do next. And here quickly again, this is the piece that we're working with. And this is going to come together like this. So starting at the bottom here, we're going to be gluing this bottom flap. So add some glue to these two side flaps here. And then bring up this bottom flap, making sure to align the edge of the flap with that fold line on the sides. Turn over your piece to the back and we're going to glue this flap down. And it's a pretty tight corner in there so I'm just going to reach in with the end of my paintbrush to push on it upwards. And next we're going to glue down this piece here. It's going to go on like this. So I'm going to cover this flap down here with my glue. And now with these upper flaps here, you just need glue on the edge because those, that's the only part that's going to be touching paper. 
and now just fold it over to attach and make sure that bottom one aligns with the bottom edge. And for these other two flaps, make sure their ends align with that corner edge. And remember, I'm using a quick drying glue. If you're using regular white glue, just make sure to go back to these parts to double check that your pieces are glued down. As you can see, even with mine, it's, it's starting to come up. So just keep going back to check. And next, we're going to be gluing these two top flaps like this. So cover these two flaps here with your glue. And then attach the two flaps, making sure to align the edge with that folded corner underneath. And lastly, we're going to be gluing these two flaps together like this. So we're going to place some glue. It doesn't matter which flap is on top and which is on the bottom. Once you place your glue, you just fold them over. And the important part here is I've designed it so the angles should all match up. So just make sure the edge of your top flap matches with the angle of the fold underneath. And as it's drying, it may pull out of alignment. So just make sure to keep checking that those angles are lined up. For mine, I'm just gonna hold it for a bit until I'm sure that the glue isn't sliding apart. And that's looking pretty good. So the assembly is done. Now let's put on the last two accent pieces. So this, these strips are going to sit under the guideline, the fold lines that I've provided. It's hard to see on mine, but you should be able to see it on yours. So starting on this side, I'm gonna add a strip of glue and then line up the edge of this strip and place it under that folds guideline. And now leave this to sit for a bit to let that glue settle. And while we're letting that top one dry, we can actually attach this bottom piece. And this time I'm placing my glue on the piece itself and then just like the top one, align it underneath that guideline. And set this aside for a couple minutes to dry. And now we're going to attach it to the front. So again, put a small bead of glue underneath that guideline. And then just bring your strip over and press down, making sure it's still aligned underneath your guideline. And now repeat with your bottom piece. And since this is now secured down because we let the first part dry, we can go ahead and do this last part. So here I'm just going to add glue to the back of the strips. And then fold them over. So if you're wondering why I don't just glue these flat before I assemble my vestibule is because if we were to do that and then assemble the vestibule, you'll get buckling because these aren't these pieces aren't pre-folded and it's hard to get fold lines on these little strips so that's why we do it this way and next we're going to work on these two awning pieces and that's these two pieces right here so once again the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make all our folds
Now this piece here is going to attach on top of this piece like this and the second piece like this. So just be aware of how you have these turned because it'll determine the pattern of your dark and light stripes. So if you look on my finished building, I have my dark stripes flanking the outside and this is just for symmetry. So just be aware if you want the symmetry, one of your pieces should be a mirror image of the other like this. And now just make the folds on these pieces. These two pieces will come together like this. So we're going to take the top piece, turn it over and cover the back with glue. And then flip it over and attach it to the piece underneath and it should be a pretty perfect fit. Now occasionally if your paper is a different thickness, your machine may not cut these pieces to the exact same size, but it shouldn't be off by too much. And then just press them together, making sure that all the surfaces are attached. And now do the same with the second set. Now give these a couple minutes to dry before we assemble them. So once they're dry, the first thing you need to do is make all your folds again. And these side flaps are gonna tuck in like this, so we're gonna put glue on these little front flaps here. Then just tuck them in behind the, those front flaps and line up the folds with the vertical edge of that front flap. And while these are drying, just keep going back to make sure that they haven't come apart. Then moving to the back, we're gonna glue down these two back flaps here. Now this one can sit over or under like this, it's up to you. This part will be hidden anyways, it's the face that's going to sit up against your building. So cover these flaps with glue. And again, I'm just gonna go back and check on my front flaps to make sure they're still nicely glued together. And then bring down that back flap like this. And check to make sure that the edges are lined up. It might help to place it down on your table and press downwards on it. And that's looking pretty good. Now do the same with the other awning. And that's it, our awnings are done. Now we can move on to assembling our building. So starting with your front and side panel, these two are gonna come together like this. And you have the option of either using double-sided tape or glue. First I'll show you how to attach them using double-sided tape. So cut some tape and then we're gonna cover that side flap with your tape. And you want to get as close as possible to the fold line without going over the fold line. And I'm just going to add one more piece for a total of three pieces. 
Now take your side flap and align the edge of the flap with that fold line and make sure these two bottom fold lines are aligned. Those are the two most important parts because they will make up the base of your building and you want to make sure your building sits flush on the surface. And once you have a good alignment, hold down both panels with one hand and then lift the top panel with the other hand and remove the lining on one piece of double sided tape. Then press down. And now you can remove the lining from your other pieces of tape and then press down the remaining part of these two panels. And that's it. That's how you attach these together with tape. Now let me show you how to do it with glue. So the next panel is going to be this back panel. It's going to attach like this. So we're going to cover this side flap with glue. Now with the glue, you don't have the luxury of pre-aligning these two panels. So just try to get it right the first time around. And for this part, regular white glue is probably better because it doesn't dry as fast and you can still wiggle your paper around even after you attach the two pieces and you don't really have that flexibility with tacky glue. And now we're going to attach our last side panel. And next, to close up your building, we're going to flip it over like this and then bring these two panels in together. Now when you go to pull over this plant panel like this, you're going to feel the inclination to just simply fold it over and press down, but you still have to align it here because depending on the alignment of your other pieces, this might not be perfectly aligned when you pull it over, so just keep that in mind. And here mine are aligned, but you can see a tiny little bulge in this side. So that tells you that if I had simply folded it over and pressed down, I wouldn't have gotten a perfect alignment. And now you can start to see your building come together. Let's close this up. Starting with the bottom of your building, we're going to push these flaps down like this. And then these two flaps are going to come one over the other. And it doesn't matter which one's on top, which one's on the bottom. And now we're going to place some glue along the edges of this flap. And now you're going to press this down to meet the two side flaps and make sure that the edge is aligned with the folded edge of the building. And you can flip this over and then reach down inside with your hands to press down on the glued areas. And now just a quick check to make sure that the edges are aligned. And next we're going to glue the second flap down. And in addition to gluing the sides, you want to place some glue along the top of this flap as well. And again, it's probably easier to go in from the inside of the building. And that looks pretty good. Now we're going to work on the roof. So we're going to set that up by pushing these flaps down and this, and then these two bigger flaps are going to come down like this. Now add your glue to the side of this flap. And you want to make sure you get your glue right to the edge. And now bring it down to attach to the two little flaps. And you want to make sure that the edge is perfectly aligned with that fold.
and repeat with the second flap. Now for this one, you're gonna have to reach your hand underneath to press up to secure that hold. Another thing you can do is to stick a flat ruler up behind there to press down on it. And now we're going to finish off by gluing on all the attachments. And here's a quick look at how all these pieces will come together. We have the vestibule piece in the center with the two awnings flanking it. And you can put the awnings however you wish. And we're going to start by attaching one awning first. And I'm going to start with my right awning. And for alignment, you're going to align the edge of your awning with the top edge of your window frame. And then the side is going to align with the side of the building. So you're going to cover the back of your awning with glue and be generous with your glue here. And now gently press it in place aligning the edge of the awning with the top of your window and then make sure the edge is aligned. Now here I'm going to let mine stick out of the side of the building slightly just to make sure that I have enough room when I go to attach the vestibule and the other awning. And with one finger supporting from behind, press the awning down. And now just a quick check just to make sure I have enough space for the other two parts. And that looks pretty good. But before we attach them, we're going to put the roof on first. And here is my roof piece. The first thing you do is fold it in half at the fold line. And it's going to sit on top like this. So I'm going to attach my roof with double sided tape because I want to prevent buckling of the roof. I want a nice smooth look when it's done. So cover both sides of your roof with double sided tape. Now take your roof and with the front of the building facing you, place your roof and try to center it, just a general placement for now. And now take your vestibule piece and push it into that center. And you're going to turn it to make sure that the vestibule is butted right up against that first awning that we've already attached. And now you're just going to wiggle your roof around until your vestibule has a nice secure placing in the center. And just check to make sure that the bottom is sitting on your table surface. So just check around to make sure that vestibule fits nice and snugly into your roof cutout. And also bring that second awning in just to make sure that it has a good fit as well. And remember the whole purpose of this is for our roof placement. So keep that roof in place with one hand. And when you're happy with the placement, remove the vestibule piece while still holding down the roof piece and then lift the flap up to remove the lining on your tape underneath. And try to do this carefully so you're not moving the roof piece around. Remember, we have it aligned where it is. And then press down in place. And you can reach up from underneath and behind to make sure that the hold is secure. And you can check again to make sure the vestibule fits nice and snug up against that awning. And that looks pretty good. Now you can attach the back of the roof.
And now that the roof is nice and secure in place, we can attach the vestibule next. And here's my vestibule piece. I'm going to cover this entire back surface with glue and be generous with your glue here. And now we're going to press this right up against the building and the roof. And so you want to make sure that the bottom is sitting on your table and also make sure that the edge is butted right up against your awning. And here I have this gap back here so I'm going to reach in with my hand and press up behind it. And you can have a peek right in there and then just press on all the glued surfaces from the inside. And here I'm just getting the bottom edge to make sure we get some nice contact down there. And check the other side to make sure there's no gapping. And there's a bit of a gap here between the top of the vestibule and my roof. So I'm just going to use the end of my paintbrush and reach in from behind to press the roof upwards. And that looks pretty good. Nice contact there. And just continue to keep checking all the surfaces until your glue is dried. Here I'm just going back to press up on the roof again. And once you're happy with the placement of the vestibule, we're going to glue on our last piece, the awning. And just like the first awning, you want to put on lots of glue here. Now just press it right in place, aligning the edge of the awning with the top of your window. And then you're going to push it right up against the vestibule. And again go in from the back to push up against the back of the awning. And if you look from the top down view, you may have a bit of a gap there, so just check for that and push in from behind. And now we can move on to the last piece, the roof of the vestibule. Here is the roof piece. You're going to just fold it in half along the fold line, and it's just going to sit on top like this. And I'm just going to attach it with some double sided tape. And I'm going to put one piece here closer to the front. And a second piece towards the back. Now place your roof piece in place. And just make sure to push it right up against the main roof. And holding it in place, lift up one flap to reveal the tape underneath and remove the lining on your tape. And then just press down to secure. And now repeat with the other side. And your bakery is done. Thanks so much for your support guys, I hope you enjoyed this one.